What's going on YouTube? It's Sean and in today's video we're going to talk about my top five myths that need to die in the fitness industry. These might not be everyone's top five but for me these are five things that I'm kind of sick of hearing and things that I think we need to have a different perspective on. Um, I'm not really critical of everything on these lists on this list but I'll kind of explain why I think these myths have to die and why we have to start looking in a different direction. So without further ado, let's get it started. And before we get started, I actually want to just thank you for coming onto this video, clicking it and, uh, you know, giving me the time of day. Um, if you could just go ahead and hit subscribe down below so that way you don't miss any of my uploads every single Monday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Now let's get back to the video. So number five on the list uh, is a hard gainer. Um, if you don't know what a hard gainer is, this is somebody that claims that they can't put on weight or put on muscle. Um, pretty much anybody can put on muscle and anybody can put on weight. In order to put on weight, you have to make sure that you're in a calorie surplus though. And a lot of people will use this, you know, ideology that they're just naturally skinny or, you know, they can't put on weight and they eat so much and they try so hard. But if you actually track your calories, you'll find that if you are a hard gainer, typically you're not eating as much as you think. Um, you know, I used to be one of these people. I was about 145 to 150 pounds, depending on, you know, how much water weight I was carrying. And I would claim that I couldn't put on weight. And then what would end up happening is, you know, I started working out and I started tracking my calories and I realized 2000 calories for me was actually really difficult to sustain. Um, and that was, you know, way back in the day, I'm over that hump now. Um, however, what you'll find is a lot of times with hard gainers, they're not actually hard gainers. What it is, is they don't have a huge appetite. So you have to slowly build up from, you know, 2000 calories maybe to 2500 but if you do eat in a calorie surplus taking in more calories than you exert um you'll definitely put on weight and that's a guarantee um and some of that weight's gonna be muscle and some of it might be fat some of it might be water weight um you know some of it might be glycogen inside your muscles which is good you know maybe that's what you want but as far as hard gainers go um you know we all have different genetics we all have different base genetics and you might be a naturally bigger person or a naturally smaller person, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a hard gainer. This is more of a myth, and in my opinion, it needs to die because we need to all kind of, you know, if your goal is to build muscle, we need to let go of the excuses and stop, you know, blaming our uh, lack of appetite for not being able to put on weight. That's just my opinion on the matter, you know. Um, like I said, this was me at one point, so I definitely empathize with this one. But if you move like past your perception of who you are as far as the skinny guy and you start moving forward towards, you know, setting goals, tracking your calories and eating in a calorie surplus, you can definitely put on weight regardless of whether or not you're a hard gainer, like naturally. So number four on the list is uh, spot reduction. This was one that I was thinking about actually moving up. Um, and the only reason why I have it this high on the list is because I think it's starting to become more commonly known that spot reduction is impossible. Now, for those of you that are watching that don't know what spot reduction is, spot reduction is like this idea that we can lose fat in just our bellies, right? Or just our arms. We want toned arms. Um, even really being toned is technically a myth. Uh, so I guess you can call this like a bonus, uh, you know, myth that needs to die. But being toned or spot reducing aren't actually possible. Now you can build muscle and you can lose weight um, and it's really difficult to do both at the same time. In order to lose belly fat, you have to lose fat as a whole. So if you lose five pounds, some of that weight might come off of your belly, but some of it might come off of your legs as well. It might come off of your arms, but your entire body is losing weight. This idea that we're losing weight in just our stomachs to keep our butts big or our arms looking swole, it's just not possible. It's kind of a hard truth. And it's one that I think is starting to, you know, set in in a lot of different circles. And it's becoming more, like, well-known in the fitness industry that you can't just lose belly fat, but you have to lose fat as a whole. So hopefully this puts an end to it. And this is one myth that I would love to see die because I think it sets an unhealthy expectation for people starting their fitness journey. 
So myth number three on the list is going to be not wanting to gain too much muscle. And what I mean by this is there's this like weird conception that if you start working out, you're just going to end up like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Um, if you look at stage ready people, they're typically on some type of PED. Now I don't want to like stereotype or make any type of accusations, but you know, even Arnold Schwarzenegger did admit to being on PEDs. So keep that in mind. Like you're not going to end up this big, you know, house of a person, um, especially if you're a female. Uh, women have, you know, lower testosterone levels, and it's typically difficult for them to be as muscular on a natural level as a man, right? Um, however, that's not to say that you can't gain muscle or that you can't be shredded. Um, you can definitely shred down, and whenever you're lean and you have muscle tissue on your frame as you're lean, you're going to look more muscular. And what I mean by that is, like, if you look at the average gym guy and you saw him in a t-shirt, and he's natural, that's what we're assuming, um you'd probably think that he was just an average Joe. But if the, he took off his shirt and his nutrition was in place and he was you know, consistent with his workouts and he stayed in a pretty low deficit or at a pretty low calorie range, he'd probably look way more shredded and way more you know, muscular with his shirt off than he does with his shirt on. Um, so keep that in mind as you know, you're entering that fitness journey. I hate this myth because I feel like a lot of people have this like concession that they're just going to end up huge, especially women from my experience. Um, I have three sisters and I always hear like one of them talk about how she's afraid to get too muscular if she starts working out. It's not going to happen. I promise you, you'll end up looking normal. Most of us are average. We have average genetics. And within, you know, the first 10 years, we're going to see the most muscle gains that we'll see in our entire life. Um, you know, typically in your first year, you'll even see the most muscle gains that you'll see in a single year. So unless, you know, of course, you decide to use PDs and things like that. Um, but keep that in mind. You're not going to end up becoming a house like right off the bat. If I could have been come, if I could have become a house, I definitely would have, you know, I would have loved to put on a ton of muscle, but it didn't end up happening. My genetics are average and I put on, you know, 15 pounds roughly my first year of working out, but not all of that was muscle tissue. Um, most people aren't going to put on 15 pounds of muscle tissue in their first year or any point in their working out career um, within, you know, a short range of, you know, or short time period, unless, of course, um, they're on some type of PED. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean you can't put on 15 pounds, um, but some of that's going to be water retention, it's going to be fat, and then you'll have some muscle tissue as well, and it's going to be up to you to decide if, you know, having that much weight on your frame is worth the fat and the water retention that you carry along with it. So that's my number three myth. Number two, and I'm kind of surprised that this one still exists, is that bodybuilders are natural or all bodybuilders are natural. Um, I'm not here to judge anybody or critique anybody's lifestyle. That's the last thing I want to do. However, we have to make sure that we're presenting a realistic uh, expectation when it comes to you know, different people that we see in magazines, on TV, inside, like on the internet or social media or whatever, right? Um, just because you're in a competition based on bodybuilding doesn't mean that you're natural. Um, a lot of them are openly on PEDs or, you know, have at least insinuated that they're on some type of PED. And uh, I remember back a couple years ago whenever I was talking to my, one of my sisters, right? I said I have three, so I got three. Um, Talking to one of them, I remember telling her that a lot of bodybuilders were on steroids or some type of PED, and she was actually surprised to hear this. Now, for me, it was more surprising to hear that somebody actually still believes that they were natural, right? Um, these people are absolute houses. Now, obviously, there's a lot that goes into it. Not everybody that you see on steroids looks like they're on steroids, right? So you think of a bodybuilder who's on steroids in an untested league or you know an IFBB pro, um, typically they're on some type of PED. However, um, just because those guys are on PEDs doesn't mean that if you took steroids, you were going to look that way. Like, you might end up putting on a few pounds of muscle tissue, and you might not be a hyper responder when it comes to, you know, PEDs, and you might look relatively average or even maintain a physique that you could have gotten naturally, but now you have all the side effects. Um, but I'm not here to, you know, talk about steroids or judge anybody for that. I don't take them. I'm not the best person to come to when it comes to advice for any type of PED or anything like that. However, I do want to make sure that I'm setting 
uh, a fully transparent stage for people watching this channel and making sure that people understand that just because someone's in a competitive sport doesn't necessarily mean particularly bodybuilding, right? Because we're looking at the aesthetic. That's the actual drive of bodybuilding. Um, and just because someone's a bodybuilder, a professional bodybuilder at that, doesn't mean that they're not on steroids. They might be on steroids. They're probably on some type of PED if it's not steroids, but they're probably on steroids. So that's one myth that needs to die. Not because of the steroid thing. Like I said, I'm not the person to go to to talk about steroids, but just because I don't want people to have a skewed image of what's realistic and what's natural. All right, number one on the list, and this one's probably gonna be a little bit more controversial, but bad genetics. And what I mean here is people who are complaining about having bad genetics, and that's why they're obese, they can't gain weight, uh, build muscle, you know, whatever. There's a lot that goes into, you know, what you are physically, and obviously, like I've said before, um, your genetic predisposition is always gonna determine your abilities, but just because you're not physically fit right now does not mean that you're not capable of being physically fit. Um, simply eating in a calorie deficit and adding some type of activity to your life, I would recommend weightlifting, but even walks and things like that can help you improve your station in life. And a lot of times what people will do is they'll use genetics as a poor excuse. But the reality is, is most of us have, uh, you know, average genetics, like I mentioned before. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having average genetics. Like, you'd be surprised by how good you could actually look if you, you know, maximized your full potential. And so if you're one of those people that is like, oh, well, my genetics are just bad and that's why I look the way that I look, and you shouldn't use that as an excuse. A lot of people who have actual genetic predispositions um, and were born with actual medical issues have an excuse. And even some of those individuals find a way to build bodies that are very admirable. So... My number one thing in terms of myths is falling back on bad genetics to explain why you have the physique that you have or that your health and your current station in life is the way that it is. You're able to improve on your current physical, um, you know, station, but you have to make sure that you're not using poor excuses like genetics to bring down, you know, your expectations. Having real expectations is perfectly fine. But saying that you can't do something because you have bad genetics is an excuse because most of us are born, you know, average and have the ability to build muscle. And most of us have the ability to lose the weight that we want to lose. However, I do want to exercise caution. My goal here is to never, you know, uh, promote a negative body image. But at the same time, we have to be realistic and honest with ourselves. And until you're honest with yourself, you'll never end up being at the fitness level that you can possibly, or that you could imagine yourself being at, right? So maximize your opportunities, maximize your potential, and don't make excuses regarding genetics. Because most of us would be surprised by how good we could actually look at the end of the day. So that's my two cents on my top five. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have anything that you're sick of hearing in terms of, you know, these fitness myths that still exist, there's tons of them, um, definitely leave a comment below. And as I said before, please, you know, if you enjoyed today's video, I make content every single Monday, 5 p.m. standard, uh, Mountain Standard Time. So definitely hit subscribe, definitely hit the bell notification so that way you can, you know, be notified whenever videos drop. Um, so once again, thank you and I will see you all in the next video.